Hello, all my mystic friends. Welcome to your weekly mystic. This is going to be a wonderful week. We start off with Mercury coming out of retrograde. Hello. Thank you, Lord. We will have that some of that energy getting back on track. There are some other bumps in the road that are coming. We'll talk about that after we do our meditation. Don't forget, this is a little bit of an extended reading. We have the, the tarot. Then we go into a meditation, clearing our chakras, and then we talk about the cards that came out here and some of the astrology that I just mentioned. So without further ado, if you'd like to have a private reading, please visit my website, royalmystic.com. I'll be more than happy to assist you once you schedule your reading. So here we go. This is a general reading for all seven days of the week. We're going to talk about each one individually. And thank you, angels, archangels, divine, pure, white light. Divine Spirit, Spirit Guides, Gods and Goddesses, thank you so much for being present here to allow everyone to have the information they seek to assist them in remaining on their highest possible spiritual path. We thank you so much, Divine, for these blessings and beautiful messages, and we receive them in the love and light for which they are intended. We thank you for this divine guidance as always, and we welcome your blessed energy. Thank you for your presence. Okay, here we go. Monday... Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. And our underlier is the Seven of Wands. Hang in there, baby. And then we have our wonderful energy going here with our clarifiers. So the Seven of Wands is saying, stand your ground, don't retreat, just hang in there. So if there's something that you've been waiting for and you're really dancing the, the ants in the pants dance, just hang in there a little bit longer. It's telling you don't give up and don't, don't let, down your, don't let your, down your guard. Allow yourself to be, your position is correct. It's just, you're just wanting it to happen faster, so don't give up too soon. Because the right decision is being made, either by you or for you. We have the Justice card, which is the Libra Major Arcana. Very strong energy of the right choice or right decision. We like that. Fair decision. And let's start off. Oh, I was about to jump in there. Man, I was trying. <laughs> that was fast. Universe. The universe will show me the right path to take to reach my goal. Absolutely. If we can stand still long enough. It, look, for me, I've learned that it's more about me being, letting go of what my mind thinks, like my logical mind, and just letting the, it occur to me. Because the universe is very good about showing you absolutely when it's the right thing. We have nurture and create the hexahedron which is the cube okay and this is this is the, the where everything stems from that's why it's talking about nurture and create because this is the moment of the creative energy um, very much tied to the sacral chakra and i think it's very much in the root chakra because it's the base it's it's the foundation so don't forget, if you want to know more about these cards, this uh, sacred geometry and the crystal cards, these are crystal oral, oracle healing cards and um, crystal healing oracle cards. That's what they are. Hematite grounding. These are um, very much part of the meditation we're going to do here in a minute. So if you have a hematite, locate it on your table. I have lots of hematite. I'm just going to put my big fat hematite stack. <laughs> it's magnetic. <laughs> they stick together. <laughs> All right. So we have the grounding energy here. That's a really good. We've got two very strong. See, this is what's cool. So I'm using these different energies in different decks. But they're saying the same thing. This is the base and this is a base. So very strong grounded root energy. And this is saying stand your ground. Right? And the universe, the universe with a B, as in boy, the universe <laughs> will show me the path to take to reach my goal. This is where we have to allow ourselves to connect and let it be shown. Okay? So, here we go. Now I can start. Monday's energy. 
the five of wands this is conflict or your own caught up moment this can be something that you're throwing a block in for yourself sometimes we make things more complicated just because we're trying to figure them out and and we don't um get out of our own way because this is what if this is some other conflict with with other people or your own confusion whatever it may be the ace of cups is coming in so you got the five of wands which is either um your own inner turmoil or something that's being negotiated maybe two two opinions are happening um but this is being overcome because you you're not in it by yourself remember the stand your ground that relates to this don't give up the fight because the universe is about to shine down on you with the ace of cups the ace of cups is the holy grail energy it is the blessing of all blessings this is the elixir of life in that cup so you can't go wrong with that that's a gift from divine remember the universe showing you the right path to take it's blessing the path so this is the dna and the elixir of life the dna of all existence so you 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 can get whatever you need from that absolutely the cup stands for healing divine um divine intellect and, and intelligence the intuitive energy of divine source it means beautiful emotional healing as well physical healing emotional healing and intuition very strong energy and it can mean love so even if there's a conflict there's still there's still love involved now the tuesday's energy we have the queen of rods she is the go get it do it person this is when you're in your work mode it's also fire sign energy so aries um Aries, Leo, and Sagittarius. Very strong energy of making things happen. Now, even though this is happening and you're feeling like you're getting it done, you're going to second guess yourself like all get out. So this nine of swords, I want to explain. You've got this ace of rods, which means she, I'm not ace, queen of rods, which means she's very capable. She's got the ace of cups, which is the help from the universe. So there's nothing that can hold you back. But this nine of swords is all about self-doubt and self-judgment and second guessing and letting fear jump in the way. So if you can distinguish this feeling of panic, because that's all it is, is a panic. Um, when you can distinguish it as the alert that you're about to step out of the box. There's about to be a big push forward. You're about to make a big surge. There's something great happening. Something new is beginning. If you can look at it as the alert for that rather than the need to be in fear, then you can you can push past this and go, oh, this is just like my, my if I push the button on my car alarm, it chirps to let me know the car is locked. Or the microwave makes a sound. If you didn't know what that was, you would be walking around your house going, what is that alarm? right but you know it's the the it's the microwave saying your food's ready same thing here if you can get yourself conditioned to not be put on edge by the feeling of excitement or adrenaline that adrenaline kick when you know you're about to hit it and this is really true because she is in action she is making things happen so realize that that is no reason to be in fear this is just an alert telling you okay we're about to step into the unknown, okay? But you want to. That's the whole point. So, Wednesday's energy. Moving into the new direction. Stepping on in it. Leaving behind what you no longer need or no longer serves you. Three of rods. Expansion and moving forward into your future in a new path. We have the judgment card, which is the resurrection or reinstatement or reincarnation. Um, it is a very strong energy of bringing something back around or starting something that you missed out on the first time. And a lot of us um, may have been in some, uh, you know, a lot of people were just starting their lives. People were graduating college and beginning new things or going to travel around the world. People had internships to go different places. And we kind of got in that place of being you know suspended in that so this is a, a the resurrection or revival of something that you you now have the opportunity to move forward in now we got thursday's energy again the justice card so this is the second time this one's showing up same card different deck 
Okay, so right decision being made. This is a concentrated decision as well. You see how she's got the blindfold on and she's got this golden light. She's really focusing this light. She's using her spiritual energy. This is spiritual chakra energy. She's focusing it on her goal without seeing it. She doesn't need her human eyes to feel the energy. Okay, so this is definitely telling you logic is not what you need. You need your spiritual energy. And here comes the death card to back that up. This is a new beginning. So you've got the Libra Major Arcana and the Scorpio Major Arcana. Beautiful energies of new beginnings coming in, allowing you to move forward very quickly once this energy is cleared. The death card is the, the cosmic garbage man coming in to take out the trash and remove obstacles. So this means a fresh new start, cleaning it all out and letting yourself move forward. So two really good cards. Thursday's energy looks great. Friday, we're going to jump in with the Four of Pentacles, stability being very much, this is the miser card. He doesn't let go of his money very easily. So this means your money is being saved and taken care of. This is being held onto. So it's not like your money is just flowing like a, like a geyser, right? This is hanging in there and being able to save your money and hold your money securely. It also means money in the bank, stable money in the bank. And the Ace of Pentacles, which is a financial resurrection. This is the, being made whole financially or being brought to a place of financial abundance. This is also a revival. You see the Easter lilies here. This being born again or the new birth. So, looking pretty good so far. That's Friday's energy with the Four of Pentacles and the Ace of Pentacles. This is two gifts from the universe. The Ace of Pentacles and the Ace of Cups. Not too shabby. Ooh, very nice. The weekend energy, we have the Two of Cups. Now, this means a couple of different things. Um, it can mean, for those of you who are in a, a love relationship, that the, the meeting of the minds and the meeting of the hearts and the meeting of the eternal souls are, are clinking cups and moving forward. This is a toast of the soul. So, if it is not that, it's talking about your own higher self with your physical body. So, the feminine would be the the spirit and the masculine is the physical flesh and bone person that you are when you see this beautiful light bursting in the between them this is a moment of being in a place of ascension and and getting in that place of being spiritually minded before you are ego minded and that's exactly what that justice card is talking about is being completely in, involved in your spiritual journey over your physical journey. And with that, you've got to let go of past events and move forward. So before he even turns around to see that these cups are there, they were put there without him even realizing that the way was already made. So don't look back at the past. You've got this three of rods here telling you, move forward, move forward. You've got this um, death card telling you, it's being cleared. You've got a new beginning here. This is beautiful energy. And the justice cards, both of them are talking about moving forward. So stop looking at what you don't have anymore. And, and there's the two cups right here telling you. If you'll, get, if you'll pick those up, it'll all be okay. You've got to be in your own place of, of letting go of the past. Because once, once this death card comes in... You've got to release, even though it's something you want to lament over. So it means you've got to forgive. That forgiving energy has to be there. You have to forgive yourself and other people and or either way. Um, you're carrying a burden that's only going to poison you, not the person you're carrying the resentment of. So please let go of that. So all of you who have been uh, anxiously waiting your meditation please grab your hematite thank you all for tuning in to this beautiful reading it's quite amazing and um, i'm going to do the astrology portion first for those who are not interested in the meditation um, so here's what's going on astrologically we have the end of the Mercury retrograde the last week of June is coming out of Merc Mercury retrograde and the second Jupiter-Pluto conjunction between April and November is happening Tuesday, the 30th, which it signals large-scale achievements, 
But because both Jupiter and Pluto are retrograde, the, fo the focus is on the past. That's why that Five of Cups is here. It's He's looking at what he did in the past. So the, the intensity of these two, Pluto is very intense in its energy, and Jupiter has very good luck, and it's all about ethics and morals. So this has the potential to make up something very big happening since we've got all this stuff going on in the world so this this conjunction is rare and only occur every 13 years so it's a kind of a big deal and on july 4th the full moon is a lunar eclipse as well so traditionally this time is for business projects and things like that uh to work things out but this is a it's kind of a a weird thing because it's going to be in that lunar cycle that eclipse cycle so the intensity of this eclipse makes july 4th an unfavorable time to schedule important events or sign life-changing documents wait for that influence to drop off into the next week okay so don't do anything until july 6th through 12th uh i would push it further toward the 12th so if you're going to make any big documents so here we go. We have the hematite energy for grounding, and it's a very good one. We're gonna we're gonna love that one. I'm I'm ready for for to let some of this. Uh, I've been working around the house, and my body's kind of giving me some some screamers, so <laughs> it's kind of agitated with me. So we're gonna do this beautiful energy of grounding, the hematite. Okay, and remember, don't hold your breath unless you're very skilled at your meditation practice. Please breathe shallowly as I channel. And here we go. Breathing in beautiful white divine light from your crown chakra now. Inhale. Hold the energy in your heart. Allow your heart to open and release all negativity, letting it fall away like dirty waters running out, just running out onto the ground. We're rinsing our, clearing our energy. Rinsing our heart, opening to let the light in, to clear and cleanse all the negativity and remove it from our bodies. We remove unforgiveness. We remove judgment. We remove pain and physical injury. We remove illness and disease. We remove the emptiness and fear of all that's been happening where we are in a place of doubt and uncertainty, we remove all of that energy. We let it go like it's a running a river from our feet, just running away from us as fast as it can go. Removing all that shadow energy, all the negativity, all the blocked and pent-up energy of being in our house, in our hunker down, we release all that energy. As we allow ourselves to move that vibrant energy of light into our bodies and bring in the beautiful, beautiful energy of white divine light and let it move through our hearts. As this energy has taken hold now and has started to ignite the wonderful light within our hearts, every beat of our heart now sends this light out to every cell in our body. Every cell is now ignited in this beautiful inner light as we become self ignited self-actualized and our light body is fully activated as we are luminous and beautiful light beings we are high vibrational beings and we're vibrating in the highest frequency now all the heaviness has gone away we have released it and let it go back to mother gaia we've allowed the hematite to absorb that energy and remove it from our physical body and our emotional body as well as our spirit as we exhale, we release all negativity and darkness and we fully engage our light bodies as we are activated and self-actualized now. Exhale. Second breath, breathing in beautiful white divine light straight into your crown, holding the energy in your crown chakra. Inhale. Holding the energy as a beautiful orb above the top of your crown where it just barely sits on the top of your head like a little little hat, little round, beautiful hat of light. As we allow this beautiful light to emerge into our 
beautiful cranium. We allow the light to activate our brain cells, releasing all memory fog and all feelings of forgetfulness and all energy of fear. We release all negativity of any kind and remove it from our physical bodies. As we allow ourselves to connect to source, all information comes in a dynamic flow of energy. All information is downloaded. Everything we need, we know, and it's given to us immediately. Source is always active and connected. We just have to tap into it and remove all blockages. As we remove the blockages that are in the way of our connection, it is now brought back to a 100% working capacity. All negativity, all blockages, and all stagnant energy are removed and disposed of as we release them back to the universe. Moving now into your pineal gland, your third eye, allowing this beautiful energy to open and activate, bringing the energy of complete connection and understanding and reception of all information, whether it's visual, audible, or a download of information. We receive it in the language that we best understand. All is welcome and understood. It is for our highest good. And we receive it in that way. Moving now into your throat chakra, allowing the voice of spirit to move through your own vibrational vocal cords. As you speak, you allow yourself to be the living embodiment of higher energy, always bringing a better, higher purpose in the words that you choose and whatever conversations you are having and sharing with others. Allow yourself to be the voice of spirit and divine in any given moment using your compassion and your ability to be part of the greater good. You are precious, you are important, and you are connected to source. We are all one with divine. There's nothing to fear. Your voice is valid and important and worthy. Moving now into your heart chakra a second time, we send the healing energy of divine light through every single vessel and every muscle fiber, every DNA strand, every single photon in our bodies is healing energy. All within us is being brought to a place of perfect harmony and health. We are fully engaged in a continuous healing, allowing our bodies to be restored and renewed as we release all that no longer serves us or any illness that may try to attach itself to us, it is now released. It can no longer hold in our physical form or our energy form at all. We receive perfect health and healing. All else is cast aside like leaves shedding from a tree. They no longer can pull life source energy from us. Moving now into your solar plexus chakra, allowing your solar plexus to be the beautiful storehouse of the energy levels of when we need extra fortitude to make it through a tougher time. We have to have that just a little bit more horsepower to get it going. This is where that warehouse is. We continuously store like a battery all the beautiful vibrant energy of the sun and the universe and all around us. This is a place of strength and power, not egoic or physical manipulation. This is a place where we pull our fortitude from when it, the going really gets tough and we have to really find, dig deep and find our, our, our storehouse of energy to allow us to be connected and to give us that extra oomph to make it through the hardest and toughest of times. Our second wind our vibrant and wonderful vitality. Moving now into your sacral chakra, allowing the creativity and connection to divine source to flow freely. All that you are being beckoned to do or create, whether it's rearrange your kitchen cabinets or go outside and build something in the garage. This is the moment where we can make music and art and 
sculpt and paint and and bring these beautiful projects of dance and expression all creativity is valid no matter what it is the universe is beckoning you to participate in the dance of life allow yourself to be part of this beautiful divine orchestra of movement and creation itself all is valid moving now into your root chakra placing the energy in your feet and in your root chakra where your seat bones are allow yourself to push that energy down like little tie downs that are going straight into the earth like roots on a massive oak tree allow yourself to fully ground and become part of the mother gaia energy as you are anchored and held secure by this energy source is always flowing and mother gaia is always resonating very positive energy for us to to latch on to to keep ourselves grounded and clear as we release all negativity all fear doubt shame all judgment all self limiting thoughts and beliefs we release 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 all of that energy of negativity all trauma all illness and disease exhale now and restore yourself fully as you release the negativity exhale Last breath, breathing in beautiful white divine life from your crown chakra. Inhale and push the energy straight through to your root chakra and down into the core of the earth. Inhale now. Allowing the energy and the white light to move through all the chakras that we've just cleared, removing any residual energy that may try to remain in our physical body. It may long, no longer do so. It is not welcome. It is not active or allowed. We push it down into the core of the earth. All energy, all white light is now sent to the center of Mother Gaia. We allow this energy to be recycled, reattuned, restored, and renewed as it's brought back to the sacred vibration of Mother Earth itself and purified, clarified, and cleansed. We exhale it now through the top of our heads as we bring that energy straight out like a white fountain of light beautiful just like at the Bellagio we allow it to just flow from us as love and light and healing abundant joy happiness inspiration and wonderful wonderful healing for all who may need it we send it out now as we exhale fountain of light <sighs> Many blessings to you all. Thank you for participating and using your energy as a wonderful healing and abundance for everyone. Okay, so let's get into our little learning section. It's not going to be too long because these are fairly straightforward. We've got the hexahedron, Nurture and Create. It is number 17 in our book. I allow myself to experience and express the joy that lies within me. When this card arises, it's time to allow yourself to express the joy and pure essence of what you're here to create. It is not only the joy of creation, but the happiness of childhood memories and feeling of protection and guidance that has been given and shown to us from this loving and supporting upbringing. It's also based on the relationship with ourselves and friendship from others. Nurture yourself and listen to the needs and wants of your body as it craves to keep you feeling alive. The essence of creativity is the ability to give birth, both physically, mentally, and, and they are imperative here. So the sacred geometry, the cube, the hexahedron, is one of the platonic five solids and has six faces. It works with the element of the earth and uses and, uh, and can be used as earth star base and sacral chakras. Within creation, the cube is formed from the formation of eight cells. The dual of the cube is the octahedron. Two tetrahedrons can fit perfectly within a cube. And two tetrahedrons placed together creates the Merkaba and the 
or the three-dimensional star of David. The cube, in actuality, can, can contain all four other platonic solids. So there's five platonic solids, but they can all be contained within this cube. So kind of a Pandora's box here. So that we're talking about this card here, so in case I'm blocking it for anybody. So, um... I'm looking to see if there's anything. The hexahedron, the hexagon is also the shape of snowflakes and beehives. It is considered perfect packing. So, allow yourself to experience the beautiful creativity. Um, oh, the base chakra, uh, of the base chakra being activated by emotions, desires, um, ideas of giving birth, creating, um, issues of worth and your body. Ambition and drive are also indicated. Control issues can arise in its in this center. Our intuition starts from this chakra. So, very, very basic grounded energy of where it all begins, quite literally, the birth of all things. So, now we have the hematite. And don't forget, guys, if you're not part of my, um, we're doing workshops now on my membership. So there's another level. It's the weekly live mem membership. If you want to join that, please do so. We're about to begin our first uh, lesson this week. So I'll be happy to see you guys join. Or you can just do the $4.99 thing if you click the join button below. I think it's right below here. Um, if you're on an eye product, you'll have to you'll have to send me a comment so I can send you the link. It's friendly with uh, Android, but I, iPhones and iPads and Apple they're kind of they're kind of fussy. <laughs> so I'll send you the link if you need to just send send a comment. So the hematite is um, the base chakra as well. Okay, researchers have discovered that this center of the earth is made of hematite formed in ge geometry of dodecahedrons. Now you can see that on here. The faces, you can see a dodecahedron shape right there. That is the one that's shaped like a, it's got five sides. So it's like the pointy top and then, then a box at the bottom, but they kind of angle out. So uh, I guess it's pentagonal. So we have the um, being in the presence of this magical crystal naturally assists you to connect deeply with the heart of the planet, grounding your roots and, and foundations into the earth. The medicine of hematite assists in detoxing on all levels, mind, body, and spirit. And it is the most powerful grounding crystal on the planet. That's pretty daggone big. I did not know that. It encourages gentle healing after shock or trauma. It grounds and connects to the center of the earth. It cleanses blood and, and assists in healing blood disorders and it purifies and cleanses your energy. So uh, something I do know about hematite as well, if you have hematite jewelry, if they break or if the stone you have, if you use it all the time to meditate, if it breaks or cracks or fractures, sometimes they just kind of explode. I, I've used to wear hematite rings. And I would get so upset every time it broke. But when it breaks, see, I get the my hick downs. Sorry. <laughs> These are my weird little gulps that happen when I'm processing energy. So um, this the hematite shatters when it gets filled when it can hold, no longer hold what it's drawn off of you. So that is uh, something that you should know. So don't get too dis disheartened if your hematite ring all of a sudden just breaks to pieces. Just get another one and, and keep, them, keep them going. Uh, when you do, don't forget, soak them in salt water. If you want to be part of my uh, memberships, uh, please look below and join. And thank you all for being part of this. This would be great. Um, we're going to start doing our, our new thing soon. So at the first of the month of July, you'll, we'll be in full swing of it. So if you want to start, then now's the perfect time. And I thank you all for your attention. And 
bl many blessings and have a wonderful safe 4th of July and love and light to you all. See you again next week. Namaste.